The African Academy of Languages of the African Union, Akalan AU, as the African Union's specialized institution, mandated to develop and promote African languages as a factor of African integration and development and to provide technical support to member states of the African Union for the development and implementation of language policies and strategies of language development and use, developed the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action in 2019. The framework called on heads of state and governments of the member states of the African Union to implement Article 29 of the Constitutive Act of the African Union, previously Article 25 of the Charter of the Organization of African Unity, to make an African language, Kiswahili, as a working language of the African Union and a language of wider communication for Africa. The heads of state and government of the member states of the African Union during the 35th Ordinary Session in February 2022 adopted the Assembly decision on the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action to make Kiswahili a working language of the Union and a language of wider communication in Africa through the concerted efforts of the Government of the United Republic of Tanzania, the African Academy of Languages, Akalan, and its partner institutions. The recommendations emanating from consultations with Akalan's organs and working structures is to conduct consultative meetings in each of the regions of Africa to establish regional committees and identify strategies of implementing the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action for Kiswahili as a working language of the African Union and a language of wider communication in Africa. It is within this context that Akalan organized a consultative meeting for the East African region in Kigali, Republic of Rwanda, on 10th and 11th May 2022. The objectives of the meeting were to develop and validate a partnership reference framework and a plan of action for the implementation of the Dar es Salaam Framework of Action. Develop a plan of action for the implementation of the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action. Establish a regional committee to monitor and implement the recommendations of the regional meeting. Establish a resource mobilization committee for the implementation of the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action. The regional consultative meeting was, amongst others, attended by members of the government of the Republic of Rwanda, the executive secretary of the African Academy of Languages, Akalan, and staff of Akalan Secretariat the President of the Assembly of Academicians of the African Academy of Languages, Akalan, the heads of Akalan national structures in the member states in which Kiswahili is spoken in East Africa, the coordinator of Akalan's Kiswahili Commission, the Executive Secretary of the Kiswahili Council of Tanzania, Baraza La Kiswahili La Taifa, Bakita, the Director of the Institute of Kiswahili Studies at the University of Dar es Salaam, the representative of the East African Kiswahili Commission, Kamishinia Kiswahili Africa Mashariki Kakama, the Executive Secretary of the Kiswahili Council of Zanzibar, Bakiza, a member of the Modern Arabic Vehicular Cross-Border Language Commission from Tunisia, and members of the Kiswahili Commission in Kigali, the President of the Association of Journalists of Kiswahili from Uganda, and members of the media in Kigali. The opening session began with playing of the anthems of the African Union and the Republic of Rwanda, followed by introductory remarks by Dr. Ujo Babajide Johnson, Akalan Senior Program and Project Officer, who moderated the session. Dr. Ujo introduced the speakers before inviting Professor Cyprian Niomugabo, Secretary of the Kiswahili Vehicular Cross-Border Language Commission, to chair the session in place of Professor Baye Mekonnen, member of Akalan's Assembly of Academicians, who could not attend the meeting. The speakers of the opening session include the President of the Assembly of Academicians, Professor Sami Bebanchambo, the Executive Secretary of Akalan, Dr. Langfafa Damfa, and the Director General of the Rwanda Cultural Heritage Academy, Ambassador Robert Masuzera. The President of Akalan's Assembly of Academicians recalled the history of the struggle to have a unifying language for Africa, saying that the Kiswahili journey started in the 1960s when Osagefo Kwame Nkrumah pioneered sending Ghanaians to be taught Kiswahili to promote it as a lingua franca of Africa. At the 1977 Lagos Festival of African Arts and Culture, tagged Festac 77, Professor Walesho Inka of Nigeria called on the OAU to adopt Kiswahili as a lingua franca for Africa. Professor Chombo then called on delegates to ensure the implementation of this vision, urging them to go beyond the framework 
to conceptualize and operationalize it by coming up with concrete, detailed, and clear strategic actions. After outlining the objectives of the meeting, Dr. Dampfer said that the Kigali Regional Meeting on the Implementation of the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action follows the adoption of the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action in February 2022 through the concerted efforts of Akalan, the Government of the United Republic of Tanzania, Akalan Partners and other stakeholders. He congratulated Professor John Kiango and the team of experts who developed the guidelines for the implementation of the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action for Kiswahili as a widely spoken language in Africa on the request and supervision of Akalan. He recalled that Akalan had already developed the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action in 2019, whose objectives are to promote Kiswahili as a working language of the African Union and a language of wider communication in Africa. He said that Akalan is responsible for accomplishing this mission with the collaboration of all the actors and that the Kigali meeting was of capital importance insofar as it was an opportunity for us to combine our efforts to develop an action plan to achieve the assigned mission by 2023. He continued to say that the promotion of Kiswahili is a cross-cutting issue and Kiswahili has now the particularity of belonging to all Africa. He called for a synergy of actions between Akalan and all entities, regional economic communities, and language and cultural institutions for the success of the mission. He said that the task is certainly difficult, but tall efforts must be put in because we have no right to relaxation, pessimism, or failure. The Director General of the Rwanda Cultural Heritage Academy, Ambassador Robert Masuzera, speaking on behalf of Honorable Rosemary Mbabazi, Minister of Youth and Culture of the Republic of Rwanda, thanked Akalan for organizing the meeting in Kigali, Rwanda. He pledged the support of the Rwandan Cultural Heritage Academy as Akalan's national structure in the country and that of the entire government of Rwanda before declaring the meeting open. The speakers admonished that the meeting should go beyond framework to effectively strategize implementation. The meeting is a historic event to implement the Dar es Salaam Framework of Action. Language is important as a tool of empowerment. The development of Kiswahili at the continental level is a great opportunity to make African languages veritable tools of communication and development. In the plenary session, Professor John Kiango made a detailed presentation of the guidelines for the implementation of the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action for Kiswahili as a working language of the African Union and a language of wider communication in Africa for scrutiny. This was followed by presentations of national strategies of implementation of the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action by the national structures in the member states in which Kiswahili is spoken. Specialized regional and national institutions mandated to develop and promote Kiswahili also made presentations of their institutional strategies. The Kiswahili Corpus and its link to the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action was presented by Dr. Selimani Sewangi and Dr. Juma Lungo, regional and technical coordinators respectively of the Akalan Kiswahili Corpus Project. Professor Abdulatif Abid of Tunisia, a member of the Modern Arabic Vehicular Cross-Border Language Commission of Akalan, also made a presentation on the relationship between Arabic and Kiswahili. Highlights of the presentation include... Kiswahili and Arabic are both major African languages. 30% of Africans speak Arabic, including Chad, Sudan, and other countries. Arabic has played a great role in the promotion of Kiswahili in its origin, growth, spread, and current status. Kiswahili is not an Arabic dialect, but is influenced by Arabic. Kiswahili is not taught in Arabic-speaking countries except Egypt and Saudi Arabia. It was recommended that embassies of Kiswahili-speaking countries, Tanzania and Kenya, should set up cultural centers in other African countries to popularize Kiswahili. Ghana should be recognized as the first country to teach Kiswahili outside Tanzania. It was the late president, Kwame Nkrumah, who proposed to Mwalimu Julius K. Yerere the teaching of Kiswahili, and since 1964, Ghana has sent students to Tanzania to study Kiswahili. The guidelines document should leave room for other stakeholders with roles clearly spelt out to be added. Additional roles should be added to the already spelt out stakeholders and participants were asked to support this endeavor. 
Akalans mandates to develop and promote African languages in partnership with languages inherited from colonization should be articulated in the guidelines. Akalans proposed Kiswahili Writers' Competition should be implemented and the jury should be composed of members from different countries who are conversant with the type of Kiswahili used in their areas. The Kiswahili Prize for Excellence should have two separate levels of competition, one for Kiswahili-speaking countries and another for the non-Kiswahili-speaking countries. As stipulated by the Terms of Reference and Program, the two committees should be set up as Implementation and Resource Mobilization Committees. The Implementation Committee should be led by language institutions, while the Resource Mobilization Committee should be led by the national structures. Each committee should also have media representation. The two committees should co-opt other necessary skill experts. Steps should be taken by Akalan to engage other stakeholders. National structures should convene stakeholders' meetings to pave the way forward. The media should be adequately mobilized and engaged for advocacy and implementation action. Dr. Juma Lungu should prepare a budget which will be passed on to Kakama and subsequently to Akalan to include deliverables and timelines. Authors and members of the media should be engaged and asked for permission to use their texts in the development of the Kiswahili corpus. Associations under Kakama and Kiswahili editors should be brought on board to support data acquisition. The corpus website should be linked to Google search to facilitate access and use of the corpus. Akalan should find ways of remunerating members of language commissions and others for their contributions. Regional committees should be set up to work with the continental committees. Heads of national structures should be the conveners of the implementation committee. The committee's reports should be forwarded to Akalan through the coordinator of the Kiswahili Vehicular Cross-Border Language Commission. The implementation committees at regional level should include members of Akalan's Assembly of Academicians in the region. Gender parity, youth representation, and membership of regional economic communities, RECs, should be considered on the implementation committees. The committees should be tasked with streamlining the roles of journalists, differentiating between roles for Kiswahili-speaking countries and the non-Kiswahili-speaking countries. The Implementation Committee should develop modalities of action for institutions, especially on training of translators and interpreters, and so on. Resource mobilization committees should be led by national structures. The private sector should be part of it. Use of resources mobilized at country level should be authorized by Akalan in the country concerned. Akalan should support national structures in skills and competencies acquisition in resource mobilization. The financial rules and regulations of African Union on resource mobilization and usage should be taken into account. Akalan's initiative of goodwill ambassadors for each region should be adopted to support the resource mobilization process. National structures should pass on the guidelines and the reports of the meetings to their governments. African languages should move beyond being mere tools of communication to economic empowerment of the people of Africa. The Kiswahili program should come up with projects for sale and co-opt people knowledgeable with packaging language projects for sale. Singers, writers, performers, celebrities should be included as assets for fundraising projects. Different modalities should be set up for different national structures as guided by their national laws. The key activities for stakeholders overall should be to actualize Kiswahili's two roles by July 2023. These are Kiswahili as a working language of the African Union and Kiswahili as a language of wider communication in Africa. To achieve the working language objective for Kiswahili, translators and interpreters should be trained. Baraza la Kiswahili la Taifa, Bakita, and Institute of Kiswahili Studies, IKS, should collaborate with the African Academy of Languages, Akalan, in training of translators and interpreters. Akalan should engage the Pan-African Center for Translation and Interpretation and the Pan-African University on the training needs for Kiswahili translators and interpreters. To achieve the language of wider communication objective, Kiswahili should be introduced in the African education systems as one of the languages within the implementation of the mother tongue-based multilingual education program recommended by UNESCO. Akalan should engage in language policies advocacy 
to ensure all member states develop language policies that give status and valorizing functions to African languages and recognize Kiswahili as a language of wider communication in Africa. Akalan should have the Language Plan of Action for Africa revised for Kiswahili to have a central role in it. At the end of the meeting, it was decided that Akalan should lead in the process of establishing the two committees for resource mobilization and implementation of the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action, strategies for a plan of action for effectively implementing the Dar es Salaam Framework for Action, the use of Kiswahili as a working language of the African Union and a language of wider communication in Africa were proposed to be developed into action plans by the various committees and commissions mentioned in this communicate. <music>